Hey there, and welcome to the Wondershare eDrawSoft channel. Many of you have been asking for a deep dive into data flow diagrams, and we're here to deliver. In today's video, we're gonna unlock the power of data flow diagrams, or DFDs, which are incredible tools for mapping how information flows through a system. Whether you're a beginner or looking to sharpen your skills, this guide has got you covered. We'll cover its basic concepts, the notations used to create a DFD, and its types, different levels of data flow diagrams, practical examples, and a step-by-step step guide to building one using the latest version of eDrawMax. A data flow diagram is used to represent the data flow through a system by providing information about the input, output, and process around the system. DFD simply defines the flow between entities in a system and how the data is processed. DFD looks like a flow chart and is useful for database management and system analysis. Data flow diagrams are easy to make. They are drawn with the help of some symbols and notations that represent the components of the flowchart. There are two types of notations used for data flow diagrams that are Jordan, Code, Gain, and Sarsen. Both notations were named after their creators, all experts who helped develop DFD methodology. Peter Code, Ed Jordan, Chris Gain, and Trish Sarson. They do have some differences in style. In Jordan and Code, notation processes are represented by circles and data stores are represented by parallel lines. While in Gain and Sarson, notation processes are rectangles with rounded corners and data stores are represented by an open-ended rectangle. Now let's dive into the common symbols and notations and explore what each one represents. The first one is process notation. It is the task that is performed by the system on the input data. It outputs process data. A process can relate to any kind of operation on data, such as modification, deletion, creation, and storage. Next one is gonna be data store notation. This is a place where data is stored in a system. It could also be the input or the output of a process. This is a data flow notation. Directional arrows are used to indicate how the data flows from one entity or database to another. Data flow is represented with an arrow symbol. The last notation is external entity notation. External entities are either the source or the destination of the DFD. It represents an external source from where data is taken. Data flow diagrams also have some levels to help you arrange and classify the data. Different levels give different amounts of details about the system. There are four levels of DFDs. The complexity of the system and the level of understanding needed for the system determines which DFD level to use. DFD at higher levels provides a top level view of the system, and DFD at lower levels gives more information about the system processes, data flows, and data stores. A set of different level DFDs can give the whole picture of the system. A level zero data flow diagram is the highest level data flow diagram, which presents an overview of the entire system. It illustrates the major processes, data flows, and the data stored in the system, but doesn't actually reveal anything about what goes into or out of these processes. Another term used for level zero data flow diagram is context diagram. It shows the system as a single process in relation to its entities. It's like the whole system was represented as a single process where the input is shown by incoming arrows and the output by outgoing arrows. Next, we have level one data flow diagrams. These help us to see a more detailed view of the system by splitting the major processes of the level zero diagram into sub processes. The data flow diagram level one shows each sub process separately as a separate process. Both the data flows and the data stores associated with each sub process are shown. In data flow diagram, the Context diagram is broken into several processes. At this level, we bring out the major functions of the system and we break down the high level processes of the level zero. The level two data flow diagram offers an even finer breakdown of the system by breaking down the sub processes defined in level one data flow diagram into more sub processes. On the level two DFD, each sub process is represented as a separate process. It shows the flows and stores of data associated with each sub process. Level two DFD is an extension of the level one DFD that explores the specific parts of level one in detail. It can be used to plan or record a specific quantity of detail about the specific functioning of that system. Now let's learn how to create a data flow diagram. All you need to do is open eDraw Max, go to new, data flow diagram, and then you can start from scratch. 
or you can find and use various templates of effective data flow diagrams based on your requirements and start from something there. For this time, I'll choose drawing from blank to show you the entire process. Now to make the DFD from scratch, you can start creating your diagram on a blank sheet. To use symbols, drawings, and other visual tools, you can use the symbol library. Click the symbol icon next to template on the left side of the screen. Now you can search for data flow in the pop-up window. You can scroll down to the data flow symbols. Finally, click add to my workbench to add it to your symbol library on the left. You can use these symbols and shapes to create a DFD. Display them on the drawing page and use them with connection lines to draft the chart. Arrange the symbols to portray all the different notations of the DFT. For example, data flow, external entity, data store, and process. To add any object on your drawing page, select it, drag it towards the page, and then place it wherever you want. You can continue drawing your data flow diagram by aligning and distributing the shapes, and you can use your preferred colors or patterns to identify specific block parts. Make sure to label the process, entity, and data store accordingly to ensure you have an ordered and distinct block diagram. Once you finish drawing, you can get a better view by deselecting rulers and grid lines. Then you can select from the current page option to view the diagram in full screen, just like we do every time we finish. And there you have it. Once you've completed the DFD, you can save it for later edits or online sharing. To save it, what you're going to do is you're going to go to File, then click on Export, and save it as any commonly used file types like Excel, Word, or PDF. To help you better understand data flow diagrams, let's wrap up by showing you some very simple and classic examples. These are really useful. A data flow diagram illustrates the way information flows through a process or system. One of the most popular templates here is the data flow diagram for ATM systems. It shows how different functions of ATMs are performed. A data flow diagram for an ATM system depicts the login request initiated by the user, which will get verified from the bank server database. If the provided information is correct, then the bank server prompts account information and will accordingly update the database with any request that is made by the customer. And here's another one, the student management system. It highlights key interactions between student, tutor, and various processes, such as submit assignments, students submit assignments, which are recorded and stored in their system, mark assignments, tutors retrieve unmarked assignments, grade them and provide feedback, retrieve marked assignments, where students can access their graded assignments along with comments, data stores, records of student submissions and tutor evaluations are maintained in a centralized data repository for consistency and tracking. The DFD effectively illustrates the flow of information within the system and ensures seamless communication between the student and tutor. For more classic examples, make sure to visit our template community. Just click the link down below to check it out. And that's a wrap for today's video. I want to thank you so much for joining us in this tutorial on creating data flow diagrams with Wondershare eDraw Max. We covered everything from the basics of data flow diagrams, types of notations, their symbols, and the different levels of data flow diagrams to practical drawing techniques, all illustrated with real world examples to highlight their effectiveness. If there's another tutorial that you'd like to see, feel free to leave a comment below and we'll make sure to consider your requests. Don't forget to subscribe for more eDraw Max tutorials and check the description for a link to try eDraw Max online or download it today. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.